Welcome to Post and Black. My name is David Hunter Jr. I went to Hampton. Uh-oh. Reality background came in Can handy. handy. Yeah. That sounds like something, you know, not, nothing you go through is wasted. Welcome to Post and Black. My name is David Hunter Jr. And on today's episode, we are so blessed to have the wonderful Shannon Baker Davis. How you doing? Good. You're doing good? You're, so, yes. you're smiling. You got a good energy. We off to a good start. Yeah. All right. So before we start, we always like to break it down just a okay. little bit, a little ice break. Okay. Would you rather have a rich friend or a loyal friend? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Temporary Oof. bliss or lifetime of bliss? I think a loyal friend. A loyal friend? Yeah. Okay. Because the richness... That could stab you in the back. What about How a rich, rich, loyal friend? How? Yeah, that would be nice. Well, you know, How rich? We're talking. We're Oprah talking rich. Oprah rich. Ooh. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? A tough one. Like you don't even know. I still know think what loyal. loyal. I still think loyal because, like, you know, they could throw money at you and then. You know, I think that's real. Call the cops on you. Like they stole from <laughs> they me. Stole the money. So, yeah, like, yeah. Somebody that's fickle, you never know what you're right. gonna get. So. You know, and we work in Hollywood. People say I don't really say it too much, but people mm. say it's a kind of an industry. You gotta watch it back. It's a fickle, it's fickle, a fickle industry. industry. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, no, I like that. I like that. So, <laughs> getting started here, you're here yeah. on Post and Black. Why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself? You know, who you are, what you're doing, and, and how you got started in the industry. Um, I'm an editor okay. and a picture editor, and I went to college. I yeah. went to Howard University okay. for oh, radio, oh, TV, man. film. We got it. You know what? H-U. I love Howard. Yes. I love you. My mom went to Howard. Uh, I was grew okay. up right in, outside of didn't... D.C. I went to Hampton. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh, y'all see this? I still like you. I still, I still, like I still you. <laughs> you know, I said I still what love you. What did your and mom she said, I say like about you. that? My mom said they paying more, oh, and you got a little track, you know, track money. So go on down there. That's true. And DC true. is so close to where I, you know how it's so close to where I live. Yeah. So Hampton was on the water. It was a different. Oh man, I got yeah, out the my city. My parent, my dad went to A and T. Really? Okay. So did he want you to go way. in? Yeah, of course they did. Yeah. So why the switch? Why, you know, I had spent every homecoming since I was like seven oh. at A and T, and every and I was like A and T fatigue. Like, yeah, give me somewhere I've new. Seen so, mm-hmm. um, they're gonna be very upset. I'm saying that. <laughs> but, it's all um, love, HBCU love. Yes, yes. And then Howard mm-hmm. um, offered me money, scholarship money. So mm-hmm. that same thing. My parents were like, "Well, you go to Howard then." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, How was your experience at Howard? I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I actually didn't want to go to Howard. I okay. wanted to go to Northwestern. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I had gone to um, a summer program when I was in high school. Yeah. And loved it. Like, loved Chicago. Yeah. Loved It was a t- uh, radio TV film program and okay. just loved it. And I was like, no, that's where I want to go. And Howard had given me a full ride. So Whoa, my parents were like, you should go there. And I was like, I guess. And yeah. I, I remember I cried when we were driving oh, up really? to Howard. Yes. Okay. And then... Got there and like that first week, mm-hmm. they basically shower you with black love. Oh man, the mecca. And, and you know? yeah, I know. and um, I remember I I loved my freshman year, had mm-hmm. a, a time the time of my life, and I remember I went home that summer mm-hmm. between freshman and sophomore year and hated every second I was really? <laughs> back home in Augusta. Oh, no, where, where is home for you? Uh, Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Okay. Gotcha. And so I just was like, oh, this is the worst. Like, I had just come <laughs> from Chocolate City and yeah. being at Howard and being on your own. And mm-hmm. I was like, ugh. And I basically, um, that was the last yeah. long period of time I spent you in like, Georgia, oh, nah, in Augusta, I'm Georgia. Yeah. City. So yeah. I, I loved Howard. Mm-hmm. It, um... It's just where you learn to love blackness. Yeah. And I hadn't really gotten that much of that when Been I was growing it. up. Yeah. So. No, it's funny you mention that. That's a lot of my friends say that. And yeah. I think from growing up, like even I moved to the suburbs. I lived yeah. in Hyattsville, Maryland. Yeah. And yeah, I went yeah, to school yeah. in Virginia. Yeah, yeah. And it was like I was always around DC. Yeah. So what I knew was like people were like, oh, I never grew up with that. Like most of my high school was like black and, you yeah. know, being in PG. So yeah, it was like, no, I didn't, I didn't Howard was like, with that. you yeah. were going to a I was going well, to Howard. Like, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, cool. I'm cool, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I just remember um, there, I just met and knew all different kinds of black people. Oh, man. And it was so beautiful because 
I had never, you know, I had never met too many people from the continent. I mm-hmm. had never met New York people. I'd never, mm-hmm. you know, like really hung out with those you know, people yeah. from LA that, you know, surfers and mm-hmm. weed heads. And it was like every type of person yeah. was represented mm-hmm. at Howard. And it was just like, we are not all the same. Like mm-hmm. we have all the different types of personalities that all the other ethnicities have. So, right. Um, and it seems strange to like get to college to, to, to figure that realize out. Yeah. that. But if you grow mm-hmm. up in a small town, yeah. you know, you don't really I mean, you can still be in the city. Yeah. You know, D.C. When I went down to Hampton, they were like, yeah. oh, you're from D.C. Yeah. And I was like, how? And they like, because they all dressed the same. Yeah. They talk the same. Y'all wear these colors. From you know, the area. From the area. Yeah. Maryland. You yeah. Know? And yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. That we talked like that or yeah. different. Yeah. You did. But you, you become just, aware. It's just you. Yeah. yeah. It's just like having a southern accent. Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, and you just get around so many different types of people right. so it was nice because and you know because howard pulls people from all over the country mm-hmm. all over the world right. you know people from it's a name the island of jamaica yeah. and you know and i and i just you know it was it's it was, awesome no. it was the, you know like one of the best experiences of my life no. one of the one of the times listening to my parents like Where you really like, was oh, good. Like, oh man, <laughs> thank y'all for me. telling me. It's good for DC. me. Yeah. I mean, most of the time mm-hmm. they tell me good advice that I but may or may was... not take. Right. But yeah, that one was good. Okay. No, I'm happy. <laughs> my mom loves Howard, you know, yeah. and they love DC. Yeah. So, you know, it's good. Yeah. Now, you going to Howard, were you always in, interested in entertainment or like your editor? I, yeah, I was. Is that what got you going to Howard? I, like, okay, you know, I since do... high school. Okay. Yeah. And I wanted to, I actually wanted to do. Work in a television studio okay. when, I, when I got to Howard. Like and I in wanted what, in to what be way? like a technical director. Okay. Like I wanted to push the buttons. Oh, okay. And then um, I worked for the Howard television station. Yeah. Okay. And we did a show called Spotlight, and you got to do all of every position. And I realized that being a technical director was my favorite, mm-hmm. which is basically editing. Yeah. So, um, cause I had met, my mom is a nuclear chemist. My dad's an electrical engineer. Oh, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, like, was there ever a book where they, they watching don't. movies, TV when you were younger? Like, I, grew interest? Up, I grew up watching TV. Okay. I, my mom used to say I was spellbound by the TV. Really? Like I watched <laughs> TV and, um, not the movies as much, but definitely watched a lot of TV. Okay. What was your favorite show growing up? Oh God. Yeah. I loved, back. you know, Living Single, Cosby yeah. Show, Classics. all yeah. those, you mm-hmm. know. Um, what else did I watch? I even watched stuff like, I watched all the half-hour comedies, like all okay. that, like NBC, yeah, Thursday Night all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, TGIF, all yeah, that fun I stuff. Was like, yeah, that was sure. growing up, that mm-hmm. was what you watched, because that was, there was no streaming. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no. whatever was on, that was what you were going to yeah, watch. Yeah, you can't change the channel. So, yeah. and then I don't remember, we, I don't think we ever had HBO. My parents wouldn't pay for stuff like that. No. Like. I so we watched as a prime, you know, network. I thing. live in color. Yeah, I grew up on a live. I remember, I remember watching a live in color faithfully. Okay. Um, so now you're at Howard. You're starting to press all the buttons. I like, you and know. I was like, this is editing, yeah. and, and I was realizing because you know I had no exposure to the people that made movies or right. made television shows. Like I didn't even realize. That it was a thing, like it was a job. That's mm-hmm. I don't know what I thought, but I yeah. just thought, you know, like that's a different whole different world. Mm-hmm. And um, our dean for my last two years was Bill Duke. Oh, wow. Bill Duke, yes. Wow. So Bill Duke came from Hollywood, yeah. basically. And Bill Duke had gone to AFI after, like, when he was older. Yeah. Like, he had gone to be a director at AFI, and he was like, there's a school called AFI, and um, you should look into it. And so... He was telling you that personally, telling, or telling the class, everybody in the group? Uh, everybody in the group, and me personally, too. Yeah. Like, And because I, you know, learned about his background, and then mm-hmm. he was just so open, and he had been on movies like even on predator so that was like like, your first like oh there's there's an actual person that's within reach Mm -hmm. that knows that part of the industry yeah so um is that what kind of brought you out to california yeah i graduated and i worked for a year at this uh uh post-production company that did political ads okay and in dc area in dc okay. and so that was big there yeah. you know and time life commercials they did oh, lots of yeah. that's where i learned the avid uh, and okay. uh and i worked there a year and i was like this is not what i want to do like <laughs> i don't want to do like you mm-hmm. know political ads for 30 years yeah 
And uh, um, so I was like, I'll go back to, I'll go to AFI or, okay. or I'll try to get into AFI. And I got in and went and that just like opened up. You were at Howard. Mm -hmm. Bill Duke is a professor mm -hmm. and he's giving you insight about going to AFI. Now you're at AFI. You said things just blew up for you in what way? Yeah, I because um, at Howard I'd done television studio studies mm -hmm. right. and I didn't really have a film background or a, a narrative background. Okay. So that's what AFI did for me. It What's was the like, difference if somebody's trying to tune in they don't know what the difference is? Um, so in, at Howard it was like you were in a studio and you were doing live mm -hmm. um, broadcasts, like news broadcasts or talk shows yeah. like this. Right. Or... Um, Sports. Okay. A lot of gotcha. that. That's what the. Um, that's what I, my education was mostly in because I had an emphasis on television. Mm -hmm. So then when I got to AFI, it was narrative. It was like your scripted shows, yeah. your films, feature films that are in theaters. Mm -hmm. Um, and you preferred that more once you got I exposed did, to it. I did. I okay. did. Because that was what I was watching. Yeah. You know, I was watching. Well, I want to do that. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, and they just had so many like major guests. Yeah. Major people came to speak to us at seminars right. and and then, you know, the people that I was in class next to were um, you know, they had been all, all over. Right. They were some working, yeah. you know, like AFI usually prefers that you have worked mm -hmm. a little bit in the industry and then you go to AFI. So okay. they rarely take in people that are just out of college, just out of undergrad. You're special. Yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so, um, and our professors were working editors. How, how big of a difference does that does that make for you to be around people who are doing what you're doing? It's a colleagues, you yeah, know, who are inspired. Like you're working with professionals. It's almost a little bit of motivation for you. It right? makes a difference because they come to your class and then a week later their movie is in theaters. Yeah. You know, and sure you're like, oh, that's yeah exposure to somebody. And they're doing it. Like one of our professors uh, was Howard Smith, and Howard had cut Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, oh, and um, just tons of movies. Stan Southas, he had cut. He was Alias was huge, yeah. and he had cut Alias. And uh, you know, like he Planet of the Apes, he's worked on since then. So yeah. they, you know, they were actual. Farrah Levy was a mm -hmm. woman who was an editor. Who right. was a, that was a that big was deal. A, I was gonna yeah, she ask about cut that. NYPD Blue. And Did you she, see like, many women in your field? And then obviously yeah. black women too. Like well, well there's they, yeah, very few black women. Right. But in our class at AFI, we had five women. Okay. Five out of like fourteen. Okay. Okay. So um, they were obviously trying to like get more women interested, and mm -hmm. then you know there's a statistic that says that. Film schools have 50-50. They have 50% women, 50% mm -hmm. men. Um, but somewhere that drops off. Really? So that in the industry, it's like 25-75. Really? So, um, wow. so that was in, that's, it's interesting to see a woman And I was going to say, why is working. that so? Do they, do they say anything behind those stats? There, why, you know, like women have a, um, a little bit of a barrier Barrier to entry, mm -hmm. for one, and then, you know, being a woman and wanting to have children and wanting to, t you know, right. be a caretaker and be with your children, that right. is a barrier, too, because the men can continue to work mm -hmm. and have children. You know, they can have a litter of children at right. home, and it doesn't necessarily yeah. affect their work. Right. Um, you know, at least... You know the woman, a woman who has to take time off to actually have the baby, and right. so, you know, and so right. that kind of impedes progress yeah, no, for I women. And that. when they don't see progress in their career, they fall out fall and out. do something else. Okay, so you you obviously stuck with it. You stuck with <laughs> yes. it. What was the difference making in you? Was there was there somebody that in particular you connected to um, that kind of because now you're yeah AFI. Yeah, you're with a you know an intimate group. What is the next step for you on your journey? I, from that um, when I was at AFI, Gina Prince Bythewood oh, brought Love and Basketball, and she brought her editor. Wow! With her for one of our seminars, and I saw Terry up there, and I was like, "A black woman yeah. edited mm -hmm. this movie that's like one of my favorite movies Favorites. of all time." Yeah. And I, was they? I remember being there, and like half the people there had never even heard of the movie. You're like, <laughs> so yeah, like, like, what are y'all doing? I was like this, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and I I went to talk to Terry afterwards, and 
we just happened to be uh, gearing up for their mentor program. Okay. And so they were assigning us mentors and they had assigned me somebody, I don't even remember who it mm-hmm. was. And I said, can I ask Terry to do it instead? And they said, that's fine. And Terry agreed. And oh, so wow. she ended up being my mentor for my second year. Oh, that's a heck of a mentor. Yeah, it and was that's, great. That's, that's props to you. It was great. She hey, came in. take that leap, guys. Watched, ask that question. Ask, you yeah. Know I mean? you watched, know. She came in and watched cuts, mm-hmm. you know, and... Um, what type of advice was she giving you based on your work you were doing to, like, she, help you? She told me, she gave just you the real? Cut, cut when it feels right. Okay. That's, like, that one thing I remember. Okay. And, you know, she watched my cut of my thesis film and gave me like real notes, like real mm. editing notes because okay. you, it's rare. You have to get an editor to give you editor's notes. Yeah. A director is going to give you something different. A cinematographer is going to mm. only look at the shots, you know? So an editor giving you notes is very valuable. Okay. You know, your friends are going to tell you some just, you know, different things. Right. And, um, and I also met, uh, a woman named Lillian Benson. Lillian Benson. Yeah. 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 And yeah, yeah, yeah. she, uh, she, um, I tell the story all the time, but no, she right. invited me and there was an, actually another black woman okay. in my class at AFI. And were you guys close and connected? Yeah, you know? we okay. were roommates. Five, oh, we were five. both editors and yeah. we're like, oh, wait, look at you. Look yeah. at you. What? <laughs> look I thought at I was going to be the only one. <laughs> And yeah. um and there was a black man. Okay. Um the trio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were like, okay, AFI. And uh <laughs> um she invited me and you know, my roommate yeah. to her house for like a little barbecue. Mm-hmm. And she had invited all the black editors in LA oh to gosh. that barbecue. So we're talking gold. Oh man. It was gold. And I had in I, I met um, I, I can't remember if John Carter was there, but I remember mm-hmm. I w- became aware of John Carter okay. because that was before IMDb was big. Yeah, a lot of people didn't so know. So you can't, you couldn't. It was it's hard to like word know of mouth, who worked much, on what, yeah. and then you know yeah. you don't know the names. Mm-hmm. And Lillian Benson was like, "I just posted this too on the Guild because mm-hmm. we're doing these." Uh, That's all they're doing. The Black History yeah. celebrating some every day. So Congrats John Carter, it was John Carter here. today. Okay, yeah, I saw that. And mm-hmm. I remember Lillian joked and called him the Prince of Blackness because really? he he cut Friday, he cut Boomerang, Lean on Me, Barbershop, the like major it was a yeah. black movie. John Carter he was, was cutting it, mm-hmm. and she called him the Prince of Blackness, and it was, and I was like, a black man cut all those things? Like I just yeah. assumed that we weren't cutting right. movies. That were mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know there were like t- other editors and they were working on television shows right. and every kind of thing and um, I just remember being this eye opening because it made me realize that I had a place in the industry like yeah. I could do it I mm-hmm. you know there you know there were black people right. cutting movies and TV shows and so that was eye opening and that's a, that's an awesome yeah experience. Lillian had been like a good I think resource. she she was she was definitely the first um, editor to be inducted into ACE mm-hmm. um, I don't remember if she was in it at the time but okay. she was the first yeah. so you know she just had tons of I advice. mean so you know the background behind why we do both post and black is my brother worked as an editor he was at Sony he freelanced a lot but he had mm-hmm. a lot of people who looked out for him yeah. his, his first teacher at the editing school her mom won an Oscar for doing sound first one oh, yeah. and these were white yeah. white people yeah but they loved him so he kind of you know moved up quickly and was 22 yeah. at Sony and he's looking around like wait where is so everybody, where is everybody? Yeah. so he was literally cold emailing yeah. and when you talk about the experience Somebody just invited him in, and then he got to meet everyone else. So it sounds like you had an opportunity similar to that. Yeah, and and I, um, I, you know, I'm always looking for a job. Yeah. (laughs) So, I when I when Facebook would let you just send a message to anybody. Right. Like now it goes into some folder and nobody gets it. I didn't know you sent anything. (laughs) What is this box? (laughs) Box I've never even seen before. Um. 
And I would just send re- anybody. You know, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd watch TV and be like, oh, I like this show. Who edited it? And I would just send it out and see That's if hilarious. anybody, you know, would get back to me. And a lot of people did. Like, really? surprisingly, a lot of people got back to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Were they always people of color that you saw? Or just like anybody? Nope, you're just anybody, like, yo, I like this show. Anybody, I like the way it's done. Anybody. Because okay. you can't necessarily tell right, yeah. of color. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess you, if you, you would see on Facebook. But... Mm-hmm. Um, Anybody, and I'd always go on IMDb and see, oh, well, who's connected to this person that I might know? And I, you know, like mm-hmm. I just was always like, how can I get to know so and so? Like, I'd literally, like, I'd pick like Michael Kahn and be like, okay, who do I know that might know Michael Kahn? Might. And then I'd you know what? But that's a good way you to look know. at it. Yeah. And, you know, I ended up, I went to a, a, a screening and Michael Kahn was there speaking and met his assistant, and mm-hmm. his assistant knew another assistant, and that assistant came to AFI to teach us film, like cutting on film. And so it was like yeah. the connections Connecting that the you dots. could make. Mm-hmm. Or, that, you know, I think that's not where we're getting to now. We're talking to you. We're, we're trying to do this to invite people in. Yeah. Because again, you know, myself working yeah. as an actor, yeah. working with my brother, I learned so much about post production and sound. Mm-hmm. To people that want to get into it, what are some what steps they do? should take? What do they do? How do they get into it? You know what I mean? Um, well, I, because when I got out of AFI, I uh, did not get into scripted okay. right away. I um, moved back to the East Coast, moved back to DC for a year and then to New York and got into reality. Oh, wow. Shows. Okay. Yeah. So I would suggest getting in where you can. Getting in where you can. Yeah. Like if you, you know, it's hard to do it from, you know, Nothing not to... New York and not LA. Yeah. It's, har- it's much, much harder to mm-hmm. do it, but you can like get into your local TV station. Yeah. You know, when I was at Howard one summer I interned at UPN. That's how long yeah. ago that wow. was. <laughs> <laughs> that was Channel 20 I mean, in I DC. Read that, right? Yeah. I interned at the UPN station. Uh-huh. And um, I don't even remember what I was doing you all just day. Did. <laughs> but I was like, can I cut a promo? And they're okay. like, sure. And so I like played around with one of their shows and was cutting mm-hmm. promos and they aired the promos. Really? And so it was like that was something that you had to be mm-hmm. like, I had this promo that was on. So wherever you can get in, get in. and cut, mm-hmm. I would say, okay. just do that. Now, you know, like also go on IMDb and find out who find is cutting the shows mm-hmm. that you love. And Now, you, you mentioned all these different shows that you watched that stood out to you, that you mm-hmm. liked in particular. Yeah. What, as an editor, what is something that stands what out to you? Like what, you know, what makes it pop? What makes you like it? Because sometimes... People that yeah. aren't even in the industry or watching something, they don't even know why they like what they like. I, I, the shot I don't. I don't watch TV as an editor. Okay, I yeah, just you watch, watch as, as a fan. as like yeah. a person watching, you know. Mm-hmm. And if I'm watching as an editor, there's probably something wrong with it. Like oh, I'm probably like, oh, they should have done that instead, yeah. you know. But usually, I'm watching as you know, this just a person that's sitting on their couch mm-hmm. watching the show. So, okay. Um, I do notice. Things that are outstanding. Okay. Um, and I, and I take note of it for sure. And and but you do, you it's hard to tell the tricks that are done because the the job is being invisible. Right. So a lot of times it's hard to tell like oh where did they mm-hmm. do you know where, how did they do this or what how did they make that happen or what yeah. did it you know so um, and the only way you know that is by talking to other yeah. editors and right. you know. And they give the, do people have their own their little, little secrets tricks or, tricks or they whatever do? they do. Or, you know, like if you're an assistant editor, go in your editor's timeline. Like be in that timeline and look, oh God, where do they do? Where mm-hmm. do they do this pull up? Where do they do this? Like match back and mm-hmm. see what choice they made. Yeah. Like, why didn't they choose that one or that one? You know, you never know, but that's your best resource is yeah. your editor's timeline to see. And you, what you seem doing. like you'd be a helpful person in that position to do it yourself. Are yeah. most people in the in the industry editing? Are they mostly helpful when it comes to that, or are some people yeah. more? Yeah, most more people than... are helpful. Okay. most people are helpful. I'm on a a show, um, uh, Kenya Barris's new show for Netflix. Yeah. yeah, and I came in at the end mm-hmm. uh, to help them get their shows finished. And every single editor there was like super helpful to get me up to speed. Oh, there wow. was never, there was never any like, where? Yeah, yeah. No, they were all very helpful. People uh-huh. are usually helpful. Um, and you just have to know 
you have to know your skills. Mm-hmm. Like you have to, you have to come with skills. Like, you know, I, people always say, Oh, can I come shadow? And, uh, you know, like they usually come to shadow my assistant mm-hmm. and I'm always like, before you step into my assistant's room, don't waste my assistant's time. <laughs> you need to read this book. You need to watch this pot, um, thing online. Yeah. You need to know these things and ask the right questions because I don't want them to be teaching you from scratch. Yeah, you need to have so something to work with. So you need to have something to work with. Mm-hmm. And you need to know a, a little bit about it to understand what you're seeing. Okay. So. No, that's big. That's big. And a lot of times people, I'm like, do this, do this, that, that, and I never hear from them again. Because it's a lot so of work to It's put a in. lot of work. You got to put in the work. You got to do, do it yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I'm big about trying to get black people in. Mm-hmm. And always trying to be like oh there's a show especially the black shows especially because you when you have a black editor a black assistant editor in on a on a black show Mm -hmm. that show does change it does it does take a different shape well you you bring up such a solid point Mm -hmm. because that's the reason why we want to do this yeah we got black actors now we're getting some black directors. Yeah. We still need the black producers. Yeah. We, you know, we're getting the black writers. The writers. But now, I, I'm, you know, from this standpoint, it's going to hit different. Yeah. When the editing, we know something about the lingo or not nah, yeah. that look right there is yeah. going to connect with the audience. Yeah. You know, or even like you are, you are on black Twitter. Right. Like you know what people are going to like cancel. Yeah. Are they like, nah, we're not going yeah. for that at <laughs> all. So it's, it, it does take shape. It takes, you know, like, and I said this today on John Carter's mm-hmm. um, post that if he, if somebody not black had cut Friday, Boomerang, those movies would not, not be, be the same. The same. No. They would absolutely not be the same. Yeah. They all, they, um, some of them have uh, black directors and mm-hmm. that's a big part of it too. But the editor does it's a big shape, yeah. you know, like you work with that director to shape, right? you know, a lot of times. You know, you have to defend things, or you have to. You have to fight because yeah. you're, you're the. You're, you're sometimes you're the only voice in the room. You're like, no, that has yeah, to stay. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard too. You have to know when to speak up. You have to read yeah. the room. You have to know um, what you can change. Yeah. Um, so in that instance, yeah, we're talking about having a director, a writer, producer, actor. Mm-hmm. In your in your mind, mm-hmm. what is the most important? You can get it from <laughs> because I know from my brother's standpoint, he's always gonna say the editor. editor. He used yeah. to tell me, he's like, I don't care what movie. Who's the most important? Sound better be right in that editing. If I see it, I'm not yeah, watching it. Like, I mean, that's that's not most important. It's well, not a competition. It, it's not a competition. Um, you know, but like, who do you feel like their voice needs, or what what tandem needs to be tight for it to, to for it to work? You know, you obviously need the script. You need that. But do yeah. you feel like something like, man, I well, have good opportunities Well, I would say in the beginning, mm-hmm. it's, if you're in television, it's the writer-producer. Okay. So they are, it, they are shaping what that show is. Tone, right. character, all these things. Um, and then as the show goes along, the editors, it, it's in the editor's hands last. Mm-hmm. So that can either be a fight Right. Till the end, <laughs> or it can be a great collaborative relationship. Right. So, you know, and editors are also, dis, di, you know, dispensable. Yeah. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. So, that's, um, that can be tough. You know, yeah. so you have to pick your battles. You have to, you know, be a people person. You have to, like, let things go. You have to, mm-hmm. you know, you, not take it personal. Yeah. You know, be so, and then on a feature, the director is the one who sees it. Through, All the way through, you know, right. so okay, there is no like, but the editor, you know, they last hands on it, yeah, everything's gonna be right, you know, when yeah. everybody's sick of watching it, sick of you, do, you dealing gotta, with it, yeah. you still have to get up and go and, and go. push the buttons, yeah, you know, and get it done, yeah. you know, like no one else is gonna yeah. do that for you. So, you it push a lot of buttons mm-hmm. on your movie, yes. How are you feeling it? You know, are you excited about the, the response to I'm everything? I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm a, and I'm, you know, just so overwhelmed yeah. by the response. How did it come apart for you even getting this opportunity? For I program? worked with Stella, the director, Stella right. McGee, um, on 
uh, episode of Grownish. Okay. So I was cutting the series of Grownish, and she came in to direct, mm -hmm. and we clicked, and um, we uh, she had just finished her movie Everything Everything. I think so. Okay. So yeah, she, yeah. She did a movie called Everything Everything. Yeah. And she was like the first black woman to direct a movie at Warner Brothers. Right. So and then she was like, I have a movie in development at mm -hmm. Universal. And then she was like, I have another indie movie that I wrote, I'm directing. I wanna I you know, this is my like baby that I wanna okay. do. And I, you know, said, oh, okay, I'll cut it. And then, you know, they shot it in 13 days. It was like a quick we cut it in six weeks. Oh wow. And it was just a great experience. We had a good working relationship. Mm -hmm. And then the movie for Universal came through and yeah. And she we was like, you know it. what? It, yes. you know, if it's not broke, it's not, you know. Yeah. Well, not. she, I mean, she had to actually fight for me really? to get the job because the studio does not like, they don't like to hire people that have not done studio, studio movies before. Okay. And I had never done a studio movie. You so know, I had done tons one. of television, mm -hmm. and but not a studio feature film. Was there any pressure that you felt? Oh, you know, of course. You know, obviously. Every day. It's exciting. Every but day. you're like, yeah, I got the job. And you hang up, you Every like, day. Wait a minute. Every day. Well, exactly. I also had to, I I had um, my second child. and I was, Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Mother yes. too. Yeah. Mother right. too. Awesome. He was three months when um, I got, well, he was like two months when I got the job. Oh, wow. And I was having to start a month later and I had to go to New York because wow. they were doing yeah. post everything shooting post everything in New York and so took you know took the baby with me and then my husband and my daughter stayed here wow. and so that was there's just a lot but you know we were like like gung ho like fight you know my agent was calling everybody mm -hmm. I had I called everybody I had worked with yeah. that was anybody. Trying to see advice or anything? Can you, no, like, can you call Universal oh. and say, <laughs> oh, get, get to get and in say that I know what I'm doing? I'm legit. Yeah. Like, I could do this. And I remember we were, I was like, you know, home, I guess I was on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. And my husband, and he was like, well, you know, if you get this, you have to do it. Yeah. Like you have to go to New York. You have to, you know, and I was like, okay, are we going to keep pushing? And he was like, yes, let's do it. So, um, system. yeah, that's I mean, that's the only way. Mm -hmm. That's the only yeah, way. Because then you have somebody do. that's like, no, you can't, I don't, eh. you know, yeah. like you, then you feel pressure to. And there's a lot of added stress level. And it's like, you don't even feel comfortable. You can't be level. as free to be as creative as yeah. you want and yeah. need to be. And it's, and, and, you know, uh, any feature is, has a certain amount of pressure right? Um, because television series, unless you're working on the pilot right. or the first season, mm -hmm. you kind of have a blueprint for what you need to do. You mm -hmm. just need to copy what's been done before or the show's already pretty popular. So yeah. you're not worried mm -hmm. or, you know, um, but a feature, you don't know what it is. You don't, you don't know how well it's going to do. You, yeah. You go, like, our first preview screening, I think it's the most nervous I've ever been in my really? entire life. <laughs> really? Because I was like, if people hate this, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, <laughs> like, we're just going to be locked in this editing room for the mm -hmm. next four months. And um, Go back and recut and do this. Yeah, and, do and you do that anyway. Right. Every time you screen it, you get some some different viewpoint that mm -hmm. you need to address. How far up to the release date? Are you working? Yeah, are you working? Because you know, we got a lot. We got a lot of lead time. Downtown. We finished on. Um, we finished in November, so mm -hmm. we got a lot of lead time. Okay. Yeah. So we got a little bit of space from mm -hmm. it, and that was on the schedule. But okay. that also meant that we were on the schedule to finish. So, and they were like, we, "You cannot go over. You cannot like change. Yeah. Like they have to." And I'm the type of person like you have to take it from me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you're like, I'll keep working, you're like, I'll keep on, working. It. I'm yeah. working on it. They tell you a certain amount of time they want yeah, it to be and so all many this. Weeks and... To post and okay. it needs to be done. And okay. Our our post producer at Universal was very good, mm -hmm. very nice, but he was very bottom line. He was like, I have no more money. You cannot do no, you no cannot do on. anything else yeah. to it. So. Oh, the resources obviously you're working at a studio now, mm -hmm. not a, a other levels yeah. TV. The resources. More, there's more. There's more. Yeah, Does there's, that make you yeah. feel more comfortable well, about what you're doing? You know, the programs. The I mean, you don't anything. necessarily get to put it in your pocket or right. anything, but you know, like you feel like 
there, you know, they had to fly me back and forth to New York and they had to, you know, put me up in New York. So, Mm -hmm. um, that was great because you didn't have to worry about like, Oh, you know, I'm living in New York and now I, Mm -hmm. I'm basically paying money to work on this job. So, you know, like you got, um, so I got that and I got a good staff. I got, um, I had a, a first assistant, a second assistant, a music editor, a PA, and then Stella, Stella had her assistant too. So, so we got a good staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that's that's a, that's a, that's a low budget movie, you know, like it, you know, the budget is in the twenties, but that's a low budget movie. Yeah, like on studio. these big mm-hmm. hundred million dollar movies, they have a staff of 30 people like right. hosts. And, but you need all of those people because there's so much work to so be done. Much to do. And it's not just the, the actual movie that you're working on. There's so, there's so many, you do so many preview screenings mm-hmm. and you have to basically make the movie. About polished. how many preview screenings are we talking about? Cause movies we did out three. Valentine's day. And how many have you done up to that point? We did three before three. we we did um, the director's cut you showed at the studio, and then right. we did three preview screenings. Okay, before and they all we felt pretty, pretty good. Yeah, we they yeah. were good. Okay. They went well. I mean, I was super nervous, but yeah. they went well. I, I mean, think black people are just like give we, us a movie yeah. we haven't seen. In how a while, was it seeing so. like Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield cutting them and seeing all the moments? That, that was great. You know what I mean? Like it was great. Just, I had worked see. on Insecure, so okay. I knew Issa from insecure and she's great she's she's just super professional but this was also different from anything that she had done before so she was nervous Mm -hmm. um and lakeith is just so good yeah no he's fine he get he does everything everything like he can do the comedy he can do the awkward he can do the serious Mm -hmm. you know he can do the dark so um he was just just yeah. great. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, a lot of love seemed like, you know, we got to tell yes. the people to get out there and support the box office. Yes. You know, it's out there, but hopefully yeah. more features to come. I hope more so. features to come, more features to come. I so, hope so obviously you got photograph out right now. Yeah. What else is on tap for you? You know, 2020 people talking big vision, you know, you have any other goals, things you're trying to accomplish um, or, you know, you mentioned I, Kenya I Bear's show. Keep, yeah, I'm on Kenya's mm-hmm. show. Um, or, or I just finished that. Okay. And, um, so that'll be out in April. Okay. In the spring. Gotcha. And it's a really good show. It's really funny. Okay. I hope people will watch that. We like funny. It's yeah, called for sure. Hashtag Black Excellence. Mm. Um, and it is, <laughs> it's really funny. It's, okay. It's, um, it's Kenya plays himself. Okay. And he is just navigating Hollywood and, and it's it's really funny. Real, you know, real experience. I've, I've enjoyed cutting it, and it's it's cut like a reality show. Really, okay. So my reality background came in came handy. Came in handy. Yeah. That's not like something you know. Ne- nothing you go through is wasted. No, you know, you know, all no, the experiences, it's true. all the relationships. It's true. You know, Gina, Gina Prince. By the way, those little tidbits. Just like you know, meeting now. people, and yeah. I, you know, I I used to beat myself up because I was like, oh. You know, if I had just stayed in LA right out of AFI, maybe I would have gotten into scripted much earlier. Mm-hmm. But like all the skills that I learned cutting reality TV for ten years okay. are super hand like come in so handy right. because I'm just used to you know because we used to have to you know if the network was like ah, we don't really like so and so like you had to recut just a scene and really. and adjust characters and then you know and so i had that experience like you know a lot of times people are beholden to the script Mm -hmm. you know wow that's a lot so i'm not gonna keep you the entire time but it's been amazing i want to give people a word of advice that you you know you stick to something that's been on you and then they should have already seen this movie it's been out since valentine's (laughs) day but tell the people why they need to go check out photograph. the photograph yeah, for sure. it is I black mean, love black love black out here. love um and it is like it's like a love jones it's like love and basketball it's mm-hmm. all those movies in the 90s and early 2000s mm-hmm. that made us you know beautiful like our right. relationships with each other were beautiful you know so it's, it's nothing it's like also, it. It's, yeah, yeah, no. And it's, you know, it's out on Valentine's Day. It's a romance movie. It's a drama because this uh, Issa 
has a, a, an estranged relationship with her mother who has just passed, and mm-hmm. she's discovering things about her mother that she never knew. So it it's it has it has comedy. Lil Rel is oh. super funny in it. Oh man! And um, and yeah, it's just a good movie. And you forgot the most important part. She cut it. Oh yeah. I cut it. Go see. You know I didn't cut it, but yeah, Shannon cut it. Where can the people find you? Where can they find you? Social media. You be like, nah. nah. Yeah. Where, where can they keep in touch with you? Um, I am sincerely Shannon D on Instagram. Okay. And I am uh, to Shan with love on Twitter. To Shan with love. Yeah. I love it. Yes. I love it. Well, no, thank you so much. You're thank you so much. so much. Wonderful guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, to this episode of Post and Black. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Post and Black. Made for more entertainment. Shout out to Lactose and LTE Vision Studios. We will see you next time on the next episode of Post and Black. Stay black.